Blessed Sunday, everyone, and welcome again to Grow Point Dumagati Worship at Home. We are now about to go into God's Word, and today the message is entitled, I Am the Resurrection and the Life, the I Am Statement of the Lord Jesus Christ found in John chapter 11. Before that, let's all come to the Lord and ask His blessing for our time together. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Lord, for Your love for us. We thank You that You love us so much. You sent Your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross many years ago. But Lord, You're not only concerned for our eternal uh, need, You're also concerned of our life here uh, on this earth. But God, in order for us to live the abundant life, in order for us to live with strength, to live in victory, Lord, we need to be secured of our eternal destiny. And we thank you that Jesus is your provision for that. And I pray that today you will open hearts and minds and that you will reveal yourself, Lord Jesus, for who you really are. Speak to us. Holy Spirit, give life unto your word. Guide us now as we uh, go into John chapter 11. And may, we, may you give us, Lord, humble hearts, open minds, and Holy Spirit, do the work that you alone can do. Be our teacher this morning. We give this time to you. We commit this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. We have heard of so many stories of people and individuals who struggle with the thought of death and who battle against death itself. In fact, if you look at humanity today, we are trying so hard in, in, you know, in our attempt to delay death as long as possible. Millions, if not billions, have been invested into medical research in trying to prolong life, to overcome diseases, especially those that will quickly, you know, lead to death. At the very moment, as we speak, the world is still being shaken by this COVID-19 pandemic. And here in the Philippines, as of June 30, 2020, according to the World Health Organization website, there are 37,514 total number of cases with 1,080 new cases added on that day on June 30. 10,233 recoveries, you add 277 for, to that. But there are, listen to this, 1,266 deaths, you know, and then plus 11 for you know, the recorded death in June 30, 2020. So that brings the total to 1,277. And if you think about it, that's a lot of people, you know, losing their lives who have died for the past, what, six to seven months now. And many of us have heard of the recent deaths of loved ones of our friends and perhaps relatives due to COVID-19 and also due to other causes, other diseases some are not diseased, you know, uh, they died through accidents and died naturally because of, you know, old age. Death, what I'm trying to bring across here, death is certain. Death will surely come to all of us. But the question is, why are so many of us afraid of death? Some of us are even afraid of the thought of dying. When it is something that is certain to come to all of us, although no one knows the time, where it will happen, what the circumstances surrounding it will be, well, we're af afraid of it. Perhaps people are scared because we don't know what will happen and what might happen exactly when death comes to us. What comes next after dying or what will it involve? Will it, in will it involve pain? We don't know. We are concerned sometimes for our loved ones who will be left behind. And, and for many of us, we're afraid of death because we're not sure and we're not certain where we will end up after this life. And so this message this morning is relevant for all of us as we continue in our series, Jesus Is, and meditate on His fifth I Am statement. I am the resurrection and the life here in John chapter 11. And in order for us to understand, we need to consider what 
was happening here in this chapter of the Gospel of John. And please keep in mind that John, this Gospel, is trying to present the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God who was sent by the Father to bring salvation to the world and to all of those who would believe in Him. And that's the purpose why John recorded these miracles here in his Gospel. In fact, if you turn to John chapter 20, verse 30 and verse 31, these are the words that you can read. Now, Jesus performed many other miraculous signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these, the, the miracles that were recorded here, in, including this one here in John chapter 11, these are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. And the words believe and life, you know, are key words in this gospel. These are mentioned in this gospel more than, you know, any other book in the New Testament and any other gospel. And these two words are closely connected to one another. In fact, one of these words, you know, one of them is the key to the other. The story here in John chapter 11 begins with the sick friend of Jesus named Lazarus. Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha, and, you know, this family was obviously, you know, they were obviously dear friends of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were his close friends who lived in Bethany. News was sent to Jesus, and they were, you know, they informed him about Lazarus being ill. But when Jesus got the news, he responded with these words found in verse 4 of John chapter 11. But when Jesus heard, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So na ay purpose, nga nung gi allow sa ginoo nga magkasakit, and eventually mamatay gyud si Lazarus. And that is to glorify God and to reveal the glory of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then the Lord decided to stay two more days. You know, in that place where he was before going to Lazarus, you know, kung asa siya, ni, ni istaro siya two more days. After that, he told his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But you have to remember that it was in Judea that people tried to stone him to death. They were trying to kill him. And so, when they heard that Jesus said, let's go back to Judea, they protested. Yeah, and told him in verse 8, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Eventually, Jesus told them the reason why they were going back to Judea. And that is because he said, our friend Lazarus. My friend, it's their friend. Obviously, okay, when they were doing ministry in that area, perhaps the house of Lazarus, Mary and Martha was their base. And they, they knew who Lazarus was and they knew Mary and Martha themselves. They were friends with this family as well as Jesus. And so he said, our friend Lazarus has died. And notice what the Lord said in John chapter 11 verse 15. He says, and for your sake, I am glad that I was not there. Why? So that you may believe. But let us go to him. And the response of Thomas gives us an insight into how the disciples view this trip to Judea. In verse 16, we can read, So Thomas called the twin, Manghatag day po nickname is Jesus na sa mga disciples. Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, let us also go, that we may die with him. To them, going back to Judea meant death. So, ingon sila, Lord, kung kay una mga Diyos Jesus, He was asleep. Ingon siya, ah, okay na siya, matara na siya. But of course, He meant that He died. And siya nga, patay naman siya, matatot ito, kuwig din Jesus. Ah, muna ni, mga matay na po taan tanan. Now, that gives us the context of this I am statement of the Lord. We need to recognize man's present dilemma. Our current state, our real struggle, the struggle that we have right now. And this is the real situation of every, you know, of, of every one of us. We fall in one of these categories, okay? Number one, people will physically die. And that is illustrated by 
Lazarus. Makita ni mo nga mga ganyan usas mga concern din ni ining uh, chapter. In fact, kung tanawin ni mo ang chapter 11, and you will highlight every time the word ill or illness, die and death comes, okay, or appears, makita ni mo nga ikadaghan gid siya gimension ani nga chapter. So it's one of the key themes in this chapter. Okay? Ang ang pagkasakit o ang kamatayon sa matag usa kanato. Because that's the reality. We will all die one day. Kitang tanan mga matay kita. Walang takibaw kanus agyod ang takna, ang lugar unsa ang ang, ang paagi nga kita mamatay. But sigurado gid na nga mamatay kita. Wala gi mabili na to sa ibabaw aning kalibutan na. Ikaduha, okay? People are not only going to die physically as illustrated by Lazarus, people are also dead spiritually as illustrated by those who do not believe in Christ. The Bible says we were born, okay, dead in our sins and trespasses. Patay ta, spirit, spiritually speaking, we were, de- we were dead. Okay? And thirdly, ang mga ongban po, dili lang uh, spiritually dead, but they were spiritually struggling as illustrated by the disciples in here. They had struggles believing in the words of the Lord. So na ito look a book audience, to look a group of tao nga nanginanglan ani nga minsay. Katong nahadlo ko kamatayon kay wala, ka, wala pa kakabalo kay kung asa ka padulong. Kay spiritually dead ka. Katong nahadlo ko mismo sa kamatayon kay ka wala kay kasiguruan kung asa ka uh, paingon human ka mamatay. O katong mga tao po nga, ano sa man, um, nahadlo ka mamatay even though kristohanon ka kay wala ka kasabot o wala ka nakatugkad kung kinsa gidi ay si Kristo sa imuha nga kinabuhi. And for those who are struggling uh, spiritually, there is revival, there is, you know, um, a, a way nga, ma-awaken ta, pagbalik, marikindol ang ato ang, you know, fire, for serving uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So many of you are at the point of your life when you think about death as a reality. And, you know, we're constantly reminded of that by the news we can see on TV, sa newspaper, sa mga, you know, uh, news feeds nga itong madawat sa itong mga devices. Gipahimangnuan ta, no? Mamatay kita. Okay? And we are also reminded that life is so short. And, um... That's the constant nowadays sa, sa news. Perhaps you are afraid of the thought of dying because you are not sure and you are not certain, as I mentioned earlier, where you will go and what will happen to you. But maybe you're a believer today and you know where you're going after death, but you, okay, um, you need to come alive again. Maybe revival, spiritual revival of your own walk and relationship with God is what you need. Perhaps you have been you have been living in defeat. You've been deceived by the enemy. You're living, you know, in doubt. You're living in discouragement and your faith has so weakened. You just feel so disconnected from God. From all that he's doing in and through his body, the church, and how he's using the church to impact the world around us today. Your faith is dead according to James. It's useless. It's not operating the way it should be. Maybe you need revival today as a believer. You see, Jesus is the answer to all of this. Siya lang girang tobagani. He is the resurrection, the coming back to life from the dead. And He is the life Himself. Jesus is the answer to our fear of physical death because He is the resurrection. And He is also the answer to our struggling spiritual life because He is the life Himself. So the main idea for us this morning in John chapter 11 Okay, the fifth statement of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am the resurrection and the life is this. Jesus is our comfort for today and our hope for eternity. You see, Christ's power over death gives us the comfort in our earthly sorrows when we lose a loved one through death. And He gives us hope that we have life beyond the grave for all eternity. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Mamatay mang gitang tanan, pero ako ang pagkabanhaw, and I can give you life. In fact, we're reminded of what he said okay, in John chapter 10. As a good shepherd, he says, I, I give 
to my sheep eternal life. No one can snatch them out of my hand. And here, in chapter 11, ang context is naay namatay si Lazarus nga suod kay niya nga higala. Naay ang mga disciples. Okay? Nga nagunauna na nga kumukuyog sila ni Jesus pabalik dito sa Judea. Mo na gid, mga matay na gid sila. They were confronted of the reality of death. They were, you know, reminded of the reality of death that at any time they could die. They could die. But there is a greater issue. And that is the spiritual deadness. Okay? Their faith that was weakening. Motoy mas importante. And ang makita na to sa statement ni Lord Jesus Christ, igimo ng pamalandungan. Okay? Nga siya ang pagkabana o siya ang kinabuhi. Okay? That will give us comfort for our sorrow. Earthly sorrow. Kung na mamatay nga, loved one. I will give us a sure hope Lig on good nga hope, sure hope for eternity. You see, when we experience His comfort daily and possess the hope of eternal life in Him, we can face the challenges of today with confidence, with strength, and victory. We need Jesus Christ daily. Okay? Para nga kita magmadaogon sa to ang pagkinabuhi ining kalibutana. So the question for us is, uh, in this uh, message is this, how can we receive the comfort and hope found only in Jesus? And we can receive and experience the comfort and hope found only in Jesus by, number one, by listening to our Lord's personal declaration. Here in verse 25, okay, so muna to, niya na siya nga, mga to tama, malik ta dito, and ningon si Thomas with his... Um, other disciples, okay, kuyuk ta ni Jesus, that we will also die with Him. And then, pag biyahe na nila, pag nila, pag lakaw nila, pag nila, ningon pa din sa verse 17, when Jesus came, He found that He had been laying in the grave for four days. So, upat na kaadlaw, sukad sa paglubong ni Lazarus. Now, this is a very important detail right here. Okay, importante kayo nga, gisulat yun din nga, upat na yun siya kaadlaw sa lubnganan. And it is important because unlike the other raising from the dead done by the Lord Jesus Christ, kay naan naman siya ilaing mga gipang banaw. Remember Jairus' daughter in Mark chapter 5? Okay? And then the widow's son in Luke chapter 7. Those who don't believe in Jesus Christ, in this particular instance, they could not argue they could not question kung namatay ba yun si Lazarus or wala. Kaya katong manggong pag-raise ni Jesus Christ sa you know, anak nga babae ni Jairus, dito naman sila sa kwarto. So pwede yung kang mo-argue, mo although na yung mga na, na yung mga naa dito, pero pwede yung kang mo-argue ba nga, kasi yung nakabalo kung tinood yun namatay. Pero din he, sa Lazarus, di hili yun nila ma-question. Naa naman sa lubnganan for four days. I tried to research unsa na may tabo sa usa patayng lawas kung masulod na sa pila ka adlaw and magsugod na gid siya kalata magsugod na gid kalata ang kuan manimaho na gid og sugod labi nagdili ni mo butangan og formalin mo nang sa atong panahon karon butangan gid ana niya harong dili siya manimaho sa ilahang panahon lahi man okay sa ilahang panahon pod ini kamatay sa tao idritso gina ni laglubong sa samang adlaw okay mo nay ilahang uh, ginabuhat sa ilahang panahon. So, in as I've said kagarina, importante ni siya nga detalye. Moonang si Jesus, pagkabalo niya nga nagkasakit si Lazarus, and he knew that he was gonna die, kabalo mo siya, kay ginobe siya. And he chose to stay two more days, remember? So that pagkabot niya dito, upat na siya kaadlaw nga naa sa lubunganan, nagsugod, nagkadugta ang yang lawas, and nanimaho na. Ningun pagani si Martha sa verse 39. Okay, Martha told the Lord Jesus Christ that the body may be decaying by that time already. And then in King James Version, and siya nga, by this time he stinketh. Nanimaho na yun. But we will soon realize, as I pointed out earlier, that there is something worse than a decaying body that stinks. It is the unbelief of those, even though who have seen and have witnessed the power of God before their eyes, still do not choose to believe in Christ. 
Many people, friends, and professional whalers, aning panahuna, were present with Mary and Martha, ingon pa sa verse 18, to give them comfort concerning their brother. Naimo ganyan ang kagawian nila. Okay, naiuban nila mga professional whalers. Ito pag ibayran sila para nag yung magbako, maghilak, magmourn. Professional mourners na sila. And then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sta- sat still in the house. And in verse 21, Monig isulti ni Martha, Lord, if you have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And yaon say tubag ni Jesus, verse 23, your brother will rise again. In verse 24, Martha replied, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection in the last day. So si, si Martha no, mayo siya og theology. In this particular instance, aware siya of the teaching of the resurrection. Because there is a resurrection uh, for everybody. A resurrection for the believers unto life and then the resurrection of the unbelievers unto damnation. Right? Um, we'll talk about that in the future. But uh, for, for this particular instance, makita na to, aware siya, kabalo siya, na siya inaibalan about anang uh, doctrine. The resurrection of the dead. Lord, kabalo ko nga mabanaw siya. Because everybody will, you know, rise again, will be raised again in the last day. And then Jesus made this statement, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. That's the claim nga makita na to. Dini sa personal declaration ni Jesus Christ in this passage in verse 25, 26. Number one, ato makita, uh, letter A, ato makita ang iyang claim that He is the resurrection and the life. And here, okay, mga tanah sa itong kagalingan, what is the resurrection? Kung si Miriam Webster Dictionary atong pangatanon, the dictionary defines it this way. It is the event told about in the Bible in which Jesus Christ returned to life after His death. The event told about in the Bible in which dead people will be brought back to life before the day of final judgment. And that suggests, uh, I mean, this dictionary will even suggest some synonyms. Okay? And, and this will help us. Some synonyms of the word resurrection. Reanimation. Rebirth. Regeneration. Rejuvenation. Okay? Renewal. Resurgence. Resuscitation. Revitalization, revival, revivification. And here the Lord Jesus Christ made that claim that He is the resurrection, the coming to life again from the dead. In Him there is revival, in Him there is reanimation, in Him there is rebirth, in Him there is regeneration, renewal, resurgence. And Jesus said, I am meaning He is the only one and there is no other that can do that, that can provide that. That's His all-exclusive claim. I am the resurrection and the life. So if you are dead spiritually, He can give you life. He can, you know, give you rebirth. To be born again, ngayang gisulti dito ni Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you need to come alive to be born again in your spirit. Siyang imuang ikinanglan. And if you are a believer who is struggling in your faith, He can revive, He can rekindle, He can rejuvenate your faith in Him. That's His claim. Let her be, in these verses as well, in verse 25, 26, we can see the comfort that Jesus gives to his good friends Mary and Martha in this particular instance in this particular uh, uh, verse it was for Martha whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die verse 26 the claim is exclusive but the comfort is universal notice this Jesus said, whoever. Because Jesus as a savior of the world, not just for a selected few, said whoever. And that means anybody. And the key to receive this comfort is by believing in Him. He says, whoever believes in me. By trusting in Him. 
The Lord gives the sure promise that a person who is trusting in Him, though he die, yet shall he live. He may die physically, but he will continue to live in the presence of God. He, in the Bible, in Jesus, he shall never die. <coughs> he shall never see death. He will always be alive spiritually. Nga pa yung preacher nga ngayon nga, Ang tao, okay, nga walay relasyon da sa Ginoo, nga wala pa naluwas. Wala nagsalig ni Kristo nga manaluwas. Kausa siya matawo, mahimugso, okay? Ikaduha siya mamatay. Mamatay siya physically and then mamatay pa siya eternally dito sa kalayo sa impierno. But once ang usa ka tao mo salig ni Kristo nga yahang bugtong og personal manaluwas, ikaduha siya matawo. Matao siya physically, o niya, matao po siya spiritually, pero kausa lang siya mamatay. Mamatay lang siya physically, pero dilit na siya mamatay eternally. Nga naman, because in the Bible, whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that comforting? Labi na ko, ibutay mo ko galingon sa uh, lugar ni Martha. They were believers. They know. Okay? They know who Jesus is. In fact, pagpangutan ni Jesus Christ sa iya ha, a personal confrontation nga to sa iya ha, nga, nito ba ka ni siya nga, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who should come into the world. So, kaila sila, o nagasalig sila ni Kristo, nga mo ilang manuluas. And Jesus was reminding her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, although mamatay siya physically, yet you will not die eternally. In other words, magpadayan siya. nga uban sa gino buhi siya dili siya magantos dito sa kalay sa impierno separated from the presence of God John 5:21 Jesus said and just as the father raises the dead and gives them life so the son also gives life to anyone he wants to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20 but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep And then in verse 21, it says, For as by one man came death, that's through Adam who fell in sin, by one man, Jesus, comes also the resurrection from the dead. Why? Because He is, in fact. He is, in truth, the resurrection and the life. So after His claim and His comfort, here is the confrontation. Jesus asked her, Do you believe this? Do you believe this, Martha? And listen to, re- to her response in verse 27. She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. So, sakto siya. Jesus is Lord. He is the Christ, the promised Messiah, the anointed one, the promised deliverer, the promised Savior. And He is the Son of God who is coming into the world. And it is important to know the truth about who Jesus is. Okay? We want and we need to be biblically accurate about our understanding kung kinsa si Jesus Christ. Perhaps Martha knows some, something about Jesus, but maybe she interprets and understands it in a different way. Remember now, the Jewish people, okay, those who believe in the coming Messiah, in the promised Messiah, who believe in the Christ, okay, remember now that ang ilahang panglantaw, ang ilang interpretation is that He would come to deliver them from their present oppression. To save them from their present oppressor. Remember now, Mona Ilahang interpretation. They thought okay, that he would come and destroy the nation that has enslaved them and deliver them from that. But of course, we know that Jesus has a different kingdom. It's the kingdom in the hearts of men, an eternal kingdom. And although he will establish his kingdom here on earth for 1,000 years, okay. But ang iyahag yung kingdom nga girefer ang yang gianhi o yang gipakamachan is an everlasting kingdom. And to take it a step further, i, uh, importante nga nata yung may bawan, kabalutan kung si kamaturan kung kinsa si Jesus Christ, importante po, okay, that atong tuhuan o unsa ang atong naibalan. So it's not enough to know the truth and even accurately know the truth. If nara na din hi, Okay? Napuno ra kag head knowledge, but if you don't believe it, it's useless. So, mo nang gi-confront Jesus with this question. Do you believe this? 
Ganahan kay Kones King James Version. Believest thou this? Do you really believe this? Okay? So, if you want to experience the comfort and if you want to have hope in Christ, number one, listen to His personal declaration. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. So, nahadlok ka? Namamatay ka? Okay? Ayaw ka hadlok eh. Kanang physical death, mabot mang ginala sa tanan. Ang pangutana, okay? Will you live forever or will you die forever? Mone mas importante. And if you don't want to die eternally in the place called hell, Jesus is telling you today, come to Him, trust in Him, and you will never die. You will only die physically once, but you will not die eternally in hell. Shay naging na na. So if you want to have that comfort and that hope, si Jesus paminawa ang iyahang giisturya. Ikaduha, look, okay, if you want to receive the comfort and hope that is found in Jesus Christ alone, number one, you should be listening to His personal declaration and number two, you should be looking at our Lord's powerful demonstration. Because um, after sa verse 27, pagkadungog uh, ni Jesus sa tubag ni, ni Martha, Martha went away and she called her sister Mary nga nagpabilin ito sa balay. Iyan yun, the master is here and he's calling for you. And as soon as Mary heard that, she arose quickly and then she went to meet with Jesus. Now Jesus was not yet uh, in the town, okay? But he was still there in that place where Martha met him. So pagkakita po sa mga Jews, dito ni Kuyog nila, nga si Mary um, ni 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 tindog, ni barog, unya nilakaw, ni sunod sila. Kaabi nila kung muato si Mary dito sa grave to, you know, in order to weep there. And then when Mary was with Jesus and when she saw him, she fell down at his feet and, you know, pareha sila gisulti ni, ni Martha, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. And then verse 33, a very touching, kaayo nga part sa story where, you know, before we can see the powerful demonstration or the display of God's power through what Jesus was about to do to the dead Lazarus, makita na to ang compassion sa gino, the Lord's compassion. Okay? Verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he, sa King James Version, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. Okay, in other versions, he was deeply moved in his spirit and he was greatly troubled. Okay, na ay simpatia gikan sa kang Jesus Christ. Jesus has divine sympathy for those who are hurting. He was a man of sorrows himself, caused by the sin and unbelief. Okay, that was evidenced by the rejection he experienced from those he came to die and save. Mar Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, He had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Mark 14, 14. When He went ashore, He saw a great crowd and He had compassion on them and He healed their sick. Mark chapter 6, verse 34. When He went ashore, He saw a great crowd and He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and He began to teach them many, many things. So we serve and we worship a God who is compassionate, who is merciful, who can sympathize and empathize with us. He is the only one who truly understands us. In the previous message, He knows us perfectly. He knows what we're going through. He knows, you know, the pain and the hurt and the sorrow that you feel deep down inside of you. And here, tanong ni Muno, ngayon Muno na, kabalo man siya ba? Unsay, 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 iyang buhaton. But, the Lord showed His compassion nga to sa iyahang mga higala. Not only can we see a display of the Lord's compassion, we can hear, you know, the Lord's concern when he was about, you know, to command Lazarus to come out of the grave, he prayed and listened to his prayer. He says, I, I know that you hear me always 
And then siya ngayon siya, but because of the people which stand by here. Okay? In other words, for this sake, for their sake, ngayon siya, I pray this prayer. In other versions, okay, sa ESV, ganun ko si ESV kay mas modern nga translation siya, they took away the stone and Jesus lifted his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. Maugid na ang pinaka-concern niya that they may believe that you have sent me, that I am the Messiah, that I am the Christ that you have sent to bring salvation to the world and to those who would believe in me. Now, why was this his main concern? Obviously, because by believing in him, they will be saved from death, they will be saved from their sins, they will be saved from hell, and they will have eternal life. Of course, that was his main concern. That's the reason why he came. The Son of God came, okay? Not to judge the world, but to save the world. Mo na ang hinungdan, mo na ang rason ni ani si Jesus Christ. So here we can see the display of the Lord's compassion, His His concern, and thirdly, we can he see the demonstration of His power through the Lord's command. Look at verse thirty-nine. He says, "Take it away. Take away the stone. Remove the stone. Remove it." And then He said in verse forty-three. Lazarus, come out. With a loud voice, the Bible says, Lazarus, come out. He commanded Lazarus to come out. And that reminds us of what he did in Matthew chapter 5. I mean, I mean Mark chapter 5 verse 41. When he raised that little girl, Jairus' daughter, back to life. Jesus, little girl, I say to you, arise. You know, in Luke chapter 7, verse 14, when he raised up that widow's son from the dead, he said, young man, I say unto you, arise. Jesus has power over death. Why? Because he is the resurrection and the, and the life. That's who he is. John 5, 25, truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and now, and, and is now here. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. My question to you this morning, are you hearing the voice of the Son of God speaking to you right now? Are you listening to Him as He speaks to your heart, as He speaks to you His words? Are you listening? Are you listening? John eleven forty four. the man okay, who had died, wow, came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus told them, unbind him, unwrap him, let him go. Let him go. There, makita ni mo, the power of God displayed before the rise. Mo na siguro ni pinakagrabing ang miracle ng makita ni nato sa atong kinabuhi. Imagine na lang good kung naa kay silingan nga namatay. Okay? Gi sulod sa lungon, gilubong na opat ka adlaw. Unya ini ko man na gipaabrian ang pansyon didto ka naa ka. Okay? Pag abris pansyon ni gawas ang baho, baho gid kaayo. Baho na ni maho, ebidensya nga nadugta na ang yang lawas kay tinuod gid siyang namatay. Unya human nagampo si Jesus ingi siya nga gawas dina sa imong lubnganan, ikaw mismo. Okay, kung ikaw mo'y eyewitness ana makita ni mo okay sa ka, sa sugo ni Kristo sa pagtawag niya sa patayng tao mi bangon siya og nigawas iyang lubnganan naglakaw nga ang iyang lawas na putos sa panapton kay mo man ilang buhaton sa una ang iyang ulog giputos pa dili gani siya katarong og lakaw siguro ang kinanglan pa siyang tabangan arong badbaron ang ang putos niya sa iyang patayng lawas unsa kay imuhang Batiyon. O sa kaya mo salud sa imong unahuna? O sa kaya imong buhaton? O ikaw mo may imong saksi niya na? O niya, may yun siguro ka ma-argue kasi mong kagalingan, well, you can argue, well, I haven't seen that and I, I don't know if I will ever see that. Brothers and sisters, kung ikaw tinood nga Kristohanon, you are a living Lazarus. You were dead and He made you alive in Christ. Read Ephesians. Read the letters of Paul. <coughs> we were once dead. 
like Lazarus. What? Jesus made you alive. God, in His love and mercy, made you alive with Christ and with Christ. You are a living Lazarus. Use Jesus, unbind him and let him go. Remove the grave clothes. They do not belong to, you know, a person who is alive. Why are there marks of death, wrappings of death? Remove it from him. Perhaps mo na itong ikinanglan. Maybe you're here, you're a Christian, but then you're still living the old way. You're still living as if you're dead spiritually. Maybe you need God today to unwrap you, to unbind you so you can go and live for Him. Maybe that's what you need. Brothers and sisters, come to Jesus Christ. Now, let's move on. If you want to experience the comfort and hope that is found in Christ alone, not only do you need to be listening to His personal declara declaration, you need to be looking at His powerful demonstration of His power. Sa kinabuhi ni Mos, kinabuhi sa bang tao, ngayon sa Number three, you need to be living by our Lord's promised deliverance. How would you respond, Ananiya? Ang mingon siguro ka, kung ako'y makakita na, tinuod siguro, mutuod siguro, it's all by God's grace, good. Makaingon siguro, it's all by God's grace. Kay even after they saw that, na ay duha ka responses yung mga basahan verse 45 and verse 46. There are those who chose to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but there were those who chose to walk away from Him in this belief. Verse 45, morning ingon sa Bible, many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on Him. Many of them, after seeing what Jesus has done, chose to believe in Him. Praise God for them. And maybe you're one of them. Okay? You've seen the power of God through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe wala kayo nakita nga, you know, tao nga na, na matay o niya, na buhi pagbalik. But the Bible says that si Jesus, may, may usa sa kanang makita na to, no? nga gisulti sa pulong si Gino, makita ni mo nga na banhaw siya gikan sa kamatayon. Maybe wala Lazarus, but you have a greater one. You can see Jesus. He died and He was buried and He rose again on the third day. Kung sa may mo response, mutuo ba kaniya or dili? So there were those who responded by believing in Jesus, but there were those who responded by reporting Jesus, walk, walking away in disbelief. In verse 46, but some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. They reported to the Pharisees what Jesus had done. And after that, there was a plot to kill Jesus Christ. Wow. Grabiha, no? So, nai ubang tao siya na gospel of Israel. Kung kita kung tao nga, you know, mamatay, ilubong, niya mabanaw, mutuo, jigo ni Jesus Christ. Sila, nakita man sila. O manggiapon sila nito. O. Imuhagid ng choice. Okay? Mopon ay gisulti dito sa uh, tao nga namatay. If you remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man, this is another Lazarus. Namatay siya dito. Dito na siya sa impyerno. Dito pa siya na concern siya mga egsoon. Ngayon siya nga, padadi sila dito o witness Abraham in that story, they have Moses and the prophets. They have the word of God. If they could not believe the word of God, if they could not believe the message of God through the prophets, they will not believe even if someone from the dead will be raised back to life and be sent to them. Nganuman, it will be the same message. What message is that? That kitang tanan makasala ta, o kitang tanan padulong ta sa impirno, o ang kaluwasan, diha lamang kang Jesus Christ. That we're all sinners, on our way to hell, we deserve the punishment of hell. And our only hope, our only Savior is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's only by believing in Him will we be forgiven of all of our sins and will we receive eternal life. Same message. The Bible and whoever it is, na believer, nga namatay, unya mubalik, po ng minsaya. So, how will you respond to Jesus Christ today? Will you trust in Him or will you walk away 
in unbelief. If you are afraid of death, which will surely come to you and to me, let me tell you, Jesus is the answer. He can save you and He can give you eternal life because He is the resurrection and the life. He promised that those who believe in Him shall never die and will never see death. 1 John 5, 12, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. 1 John 5, 20, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. But maybe you're here today, you're a believer, but you don't, you know, you know you need a revival. Come to Jesus Christ. Recommit to Him. Stop sinning. Stop walking in the path that leads you away from the Lord, from your Savior. And start walking with Him again. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. May this be a reminder to you if you're a believer who needs a revival. We were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. We too might walk in the newness of life. Jesus is our comfort for today and our hope for eternity. His power over death gives us the comfort in our earthly sorrows when we lose someone we love through death. And it gives us hope that we have life beyond the grave for all eternity. When we experience His comfort and possess the hope of eternal life in Him, we can face the challenges of today with confidence, strength, and victory. And in order for you to experience the comfort and possess that hope found only in Jesus, listen to His voice. Hear Him as He speaks to you about who He is. And listen to His promises. And then look at His wonderful display of His power in your own life and in the lives of others. And be living by faith. Trust in Him. Take Him at His word. Then you can have the comfort and hope that is only found in Jesus Christ. For discussion questions, I'll give you a few questions. Number one, this is to help us apply the truth we've just heard. How can you listen to God's voice more in the coming days? And do you think that is important? Why is it important or why is it not important to you? Number two, how can we get comfort in times of sorrow based on this story in John chapter 11? Okay, so I'm to experience yang comfort based on your story. And that's the message itself, actually. Just, you know, I, I hope that you will internalize it. You will try to recall as much as you can and then have a great discussion with your a small group. And number three, do you know someone? Is there someone in your life who knows, okay? I mean, you know, that needs Jesus Christ, who needs to know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Is there somebody in your life who needs to know Jesus? What are you going to do about it? So I hope that this message will be a blessing. I hope this will be an encouragement. Remember Jesus, okay? See, Jesus is our comfort for today and He is our hope for eternity. God bless you.